What is going on everybody, my name is Robert Watkin and welcome back to another tutorial. This one we are back with the Vegas Pro tutorials, it's been a little while since we've done one. Um, also, I, I've done a big stupid, I accidentally forgot to record the audio for this episode, so uh, what I mean by that is I've just recorded it and I'm now recording it again. So yeah, well done me. Um, it was a, I've done quite well as well, I thought that worked well. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we'll get into this. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use masks in Vegas Pro. If you've seen any of my previous tutorials, you may have seen me use the mask before. I know I've done it for at least one transition video, maybe a couple more videos. Um, so if you have seen that tutorial, you will know a bit about the tool. But today I'm going to try to go into it with a bit of depth. Um, but also, it's going to be quite a simple example. As you can see on screen now, I will show the actual final video, essentially. It's going to be me on screen twice. You've probably seen many people do this in the past. It's a very, very simple little movie magic thing you can do. Um, but it's quite fun to do, and it's good, it's good to learn how the mask works. Um, so what we're going to do here is start by importing our media now as you can see i've already got mine on screen that's because i've just recorded the episode so i've already imported it and now i've got to do it again <laughs> nice um but if you haven't got your media imported like i have already just go to import media find where the file is located and import it um once you've got the video on screen you can just drag and drop it onto the timeline and then we can get started so from the example you just seen you will notice that there was me twice on screen. So to do this, to set up the video, you will first need your camera on some sort of stable position. Um, preferably, you'd want it on a tripod to make sure you're not getting any shake on the video or else the effect isn't going to work as well. It's not going to be as realistic. It's not going to be as believable. And you can either do two separate clips of you walking on and off screen like you will see me do here. So if I play this quickly, you can see I'm walking on a screen. You can also have a conversation with yourself or whatever, but in this case, I'm just walking on and off. Um, you can either do two separate clips, or you can do what I've done where I've started recording, I've walked on, walked off, went to the other location, and then done the same thing, I've walked on and walked off. I would recommend trying to keep it all as one clip, because that means you're not going to shake the camera at all when you press it with your finger. It may seem insignificant, but when you've got the two clips lined up, a slight variation can be very noticeable. So I would recommend either using some sort of wireless receiver so you can activate your camera wirelessly, or just press it and don't touch it once you've pressed record. That's pretty much the easiest way to do it. So the first thing we're going to want to do here is actually split the clip into the two main clips. Now, I did actually walk on and off three times. Um, this first one I'm going to scrap because I walked on, forgot to walk off the way I came, and went that way. So just once I go off screen here, I'm going to cut and delete that. If you don't know how to uh, do these basic edits, you can find them on my channel. Uh, at the moment, I'm just using the S key to split the clip, and then I'm using the delete key to delete what I don't need. So we're going to hit play here, wait till I walk off screen, and then we'll split it again. So just about there. Um, now we're going to wait till I'm on the other side. Yeah, we're going to split that and delete that middle clip now. So we're walking on, we are walking off, and hey, ah, bisto, we are sorted. So these are the two clips, so we've got me walking on from the stairs, and we've got me walking on from my room. Um, what you're going to want to do first of all is have these videos on separate tracks. So we're going to start by right clicking in this blank area down here, and clicking insert video track. If for your video project you are, for example, talking to yourself, having a conversation with yourself, which is quite a fun thing to do, you've got to get the timing right and stuff like that, you're going to want your audio in your video, so you're also going to have to create an audio track. And this just means when you drag your video on top of here, you can then drag the audio down the layer, and then you've just got your audio on separate lines and your video on separate lines, or tracks, should I say, and that just makes it a little bit easier to edit them separately but still have them going at once. For our clip, we're not going to use the audio, so I'm just going to simply right-click and delete the track on here. We are just going to be solely showcasing the mask. So, if you've ever used a piece of software like Photoshop, or maybe you just know how it works on here already, um, tracks are essentially like layers in Photoshop. So, whatever you've got on the top will block what you've got on the bottom. So if we play this now, even though we've got both clips there, we can only see the clip on the top. What the mask is going to do 
is allow us to select this area, so the left half of the screen, and say, okay, we only want that. We're going to cut that bit out. Everything that's not within the mask, so what is on the right, is going to just disappear. It's going to be deleted, and it's going to be transparent. And that, therefore, means the layer below, or layers below, in some cases, is what we're going to see in that blank area. So that's my best explanation of how a mask works. Um, I hope that made sense. So to make the mask, we're going to first go into the event pan and crop tool here. I'm going to click on that. And we're also going to make sure our sync cursor is on. Um, if it's not on, if it's like that, just click on it so it is highlighted like so. Uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is click the mask button at the beginning here. And that'll just enable the mask. Now... It just looks like the normal video at the moment. That's because there is no mask on the page. What we're first going to do is move to the very first keyframe here. You can see this little dot. And at the moment, whatever we do on this keyframe is going to set all the keyframes throughout this entire clip. If we were to add multiple keyframes with different settings, it would animate between those keyframes. Um, and I'll show you what I mean a bit more in a moment. Uh, but you can see we have got a few tools down here. I'm going to quickly show them. So we've got an oval tool, which if we draw draw that, it'll make an oval. And we will only be able to see what's in that oval. Now, at the moment, you can still see what looks like the full frame. That's because we've got the same clip underneath. The only way you can actually tell at the moment is because there's a slight light difference. So I'm just going to make it so we can only see that layer for now. So you can see that when I move this mask around, all we can see is what is within the mask. We can also have a rectangle mask, as you can see on the side. And to get rid of them, you just simply hit the delete key on the keyboard. Um, or we can use this tool, which allows us to create our own random shapes. If we drag, we can have a bit of curvature. If we click, it'll just be loads of sharp angles. So we can make some really funky designs. We could get accurate shapes of people, let's say, or just any object we want to mask out. And then we can have that there on screen. Now, we are just going to be using the rectangle for this. Like I said, I'm trying to keep it quite simple. And to start, we're just going to drag on half the screen. Because we know that I'm only going to be walking on the left hand side of the screen, it's quite easy to just guesstimate where we need to put it. If the scene was something a bit more complicated with possibly lots of things that you need to mask out, then you may have to actually just kind of go frame by frame and create the mask as you go. Um, in this case, we're just going to have this one set mask. Now, if we drag our little timeline at the bottom here, our little cursor on the timeline, just to see if we are in frame, we can see that we are. Uh, if we go all the way through, we stay inside of that rectangle and if you look on the actual preview window you can see that I do stay in frame the entire time. Now let's say we did need to go along and animate it. We could do this by let's say starting here so we'll only show a very very little snippet of the screen. Um, so I'm just going to squish that so you can see it. We could move along to where we appear on the screen which would be here. So you can see that I've started to appear. I'm going to create a keyframe by clicking this create keyframe. And then I'm going to move to just after my arm is past the actual edge. Now what we can do is move the keyframe forward. Or sorry, move the mask forward. And if we now go between these two keyframes, you can see it animates the mask. Um, the first two keyframes don't have any changes. That's because I made no differences. But of course, when I moved it here, it's, it's took that data and made a little animation out of it so if we go a little bit further now let's say here once again move it past my body to there and then we'll move backwards we can see it does keep in front of my hand now let's say there was a circumstance where my hand actually passed in front of it and then swung back we could easily just go into here and then move that bit forward a bit so the animation would actually go forward and then back a little bit to readjust um and you can also move these keyframes about as you need. So let's say everything I needed shifted along or just in a different order. We can move them and then end up with a different animation. Um, and I'm just going to undo that quickly. And I'm going to continue moving these keyframes along now. So we can just keep them going all the way until here where I'm on the screen. Then just before I go off, I'm going to create another one because I don't want it to start moving here to a keyframe which is set to here because then as I'm standing still, it might catch up to me. I just want it to stay still and then start moving back. Now that was a little too quick there, so I'm actually going to pull that out a bit. Just check that. Yep, that looks okay. I can move that in. And then now that I'm off screen, we can move to there. And you will see that as we move through this clip slowly, 
it ensures that I'm inside the rectangle the entire time. Now, using the set of tools we have got here, uh, we can actually make some really complicated shapes if we wanted. So if you do want to go wild and mask out some crazy shapes for like each individual keyframe, you can do that if you want, or you can do something basic like this. Now, I'm going to go ahead and remove these keyframes because like I said, we don't need all of this. We know there's nothing moving onto this side of the screen. We know we don't we know we only need the mask to be here, so we're just going to keep it here. Now, I'm going to go back down to here, I'm going to close this, we can see both scenes now, and if we hit play, we'll have a look at how these are line up, because we should be able to see the clip below it now, and we can, so I'm walking on screen, do a little gang sign, walk off. Now, I'm going to try and align them up a bit, I think the top clip needs moved forward a tiny bit, so we'll do that. We'll give it another play from about here. I want to kind of match up the gang signs. <laughs> right, I'm, I'm quite happy with that for timing. Um, yeah, okay. <laughs> that, that's good. I'm liking that. Um, now, the one thing you will notice is there is, of course, this colour difference between the two clips. Now, the best way to sort this would be actually account for it in production and have either some way... Of keeping the light the same the entire time um, if this is a situation where you're outdoors for example this is going to be very hard to achieve uh, but preferably try and do it in production that's why I did do it inside but even while being indoors just my camera actually adjusting and stuff like that it did cause some slight variations between the scenes um, so the easiest way to fix this within Vegas itself is to use a feather and a feather essentially just blurs this edge here so you can't really tell the difference that much. So if we go back into the event pan and crop on the clip which has got the mask, um, bearing in mind I should have said this earlier, the mask should only occur on the top clip. Uh, I'll probably caption that somewhere in the video but the mask should be on whatever clip is on the top not the bottom because uh, if it's on the bottom you won't be able to see through the top clip, therefore you won't even see the mask on the bottom clip. Uh, so make sure you've got it on the top. But what we're going to do is, once again, click on this keyframe, because this is the frame we need to be editing. And you'll see we've got feather type at the side here. And we're going to choose both. Now you can choose in, and if you choose in, the feather, the fade, is going to happen before the line. So like here. If you choose after, it'll happen here. And if you choose both, it does like a 50-50 split of both. So uh, we're going to go both. And then we're going to just slowly increase the feather by also looking at this side of the screen on the preview over here. And we're just going to increase the feather until it looks pretty much seamless and we can't tell the difference. Right, I think that looks pretty good. I can't really tell the difference there. We're going to hit play on the video just to see how well that has actually worked. And yeah, that looks pretty good. I can't really tell the difference. Um, some of you out there may be able to tell the difference, but I, I'm, I'm pretty bad at stuff like that. I can't tell the difference. Uh, so I think that's worked pretty well. So we're going to close this down. And there is one last little error or tweak that needs to be occurred. Just to make sure this is a completely foolproof, believable camera trick. Now, if we hit play, you will notice right there. It's very, very subtle. But when this clip comes on... Because there was a difference in the clips, you can actually see that difference just kind of snap in. So the easiest way to account for this is just add a fade at the beginning. And you will see a little bit of a light change. But if you do it right, if you get the timing right, adjust it to the right length, you could get it to a pretty well executed point where you just can't tell the difference. Um, so if we hit play on this one more time, we'll have a watch and see how it looks. So that is how to use masks in Vegas Pro, guys. I hope you did enjoy. Um, if you did find this video helpful, then please leave a like. I hope. Just double checking. Okay, yeah, I have recorded this time. I, I, I didn't want to record that again. That, that would have been the third time. <laughs> but we've got it recorded this time. So, yeah, I hope you did enjoy the video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did find it helpful, please leave a like on the video. It does help me a lot. Also, if you do want to see more tutorials, please consider subscribing to the channel. That also does help me a lot as well. Um, but that's going to be it for this video, guys. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video of whatever I make. Goodbye.